what's the event at Christmas time? Uh, it's called the Youngstown Flea. So that's another, so with it, so Youngstown, so we have the Flea, the Youngstown Flea is a community of makers, it brings the makers together. We have a war bakery, we have the, the one of the organizations from the first career party, Yeda, years ago. Uh, there's huge amounts of different groups here in Youngstown for different variety of arts. And it was neat to see over the years how much uh, you know has changed. I mean, back in the 50s, downtown Youngstown had a Picasso art gallery. We sold Picassos in downtown Youngstown. Well, that gives you some sense of how much money was here yeah. at one time. And if you take a drive up Fifth Avenue, you can see some of that wealth in the mansions that are along Fifth Avenue, which are still here today, and which you can still buy for under $200,000. Um, so it's, it's interesting. So I think one of the things I wanna ask you is, okay, so, so you've got this background and you're thinking about, hey, how do I parlay that into an art gallery? What's the, how do you come up with the mission of what you wanna do? How did that, how did you derive that? Because I think you haven't gotten into it yet, but I'll, I'll dr drag you into it on, you, you, you're operating a really different gallery and it's more of a community space. So how did that evolve into, not just an art gallery, but a community space and how you wanna so, portray so? So I'm gonna make a joke here for you before he interjects. Uh, you find yourself an MBA or someone that's getting ready to do his MBA at one of the best schools in the country. And when someone, so Steve has his MBA from Case Western and one of his studies was creating a business in an impoverished area. And so it was constantly sitting down, coming up with a business plan of if we just sold artwork in Youngstown, Ohio, would that work? No. If you had an event space in Youngstown, Ohio, would that work? Kind of, but that's not what we want to do. Do we just want to show artists? What is artists? Do is a musicians? So when we first started, we wanted to make sure that we were open to all creative forms. We've done dance recitals, we've held hundreds of concerts, and we have had an art exhibit almost every single month for the past five years. Uh, this year we started doing two month long exhibits to change up the business model a little bit. And it was creating a space that acted as a nonprofit would or traditional art, like a nonprofit art gallery, but where all profits or all money made went back into keeping the space open. So that's how. So you operated kind of like a museum. A museum, we operate as a museum. So the idea so is that you can buy, buy pieces for. And so if you're from Youngstown, you went to the Butler. And you walk into the Butler, you, growing up, you could always see artwork for free. So you were always able to see artwork. But that idea of being lower middle class kids, you never had that idea that, that you could actually buy artwork. So then after we both went through school and we were both selling our pieces, uh, it was that idea that why do we have to keep shipping our artwork or our friends' artwork to other places in the country when we live here? This is the best like experiment on the face of the place, planet. Like if your artwork fails in Youngstown, Ohio, it's not going to work anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think, Steve, was the most unusual event you had that wouldn't typically be found at an art gallery? We had one of our, sh our, our art shows specifically was a motorcycle show. Uh, we had pictures of motorcycles all, all the way through. We had motorcycles in the gallery. Uh, people wouldn't typically think of that as an artistic show, but they're, they're, they are art forms. Um, that, that's probably our most unique art show wise. Can you think of Dan, anything um, else come to mind? The bar mitzvah. Or it's, uh, we did uh, Lindsay Renee Ben. No, yeah. I think Lindsay Renee Ben was so we did a show that we had women in the empowerment show of different women artists on the wall, but then we turned the space into a recital hall for a month and we live streamed all the 
events. And so it was a recital hall for different YSU and Lince Renee Benton's dance studio. Then it transferred into they were dancing outside in our parking lot. We were doing live concerts. And it was getting the interaction of both the pieces and the performances to get fresh eyes on the stuff. And I think that was one of the big, I guess, uphill battle throughout the years is always getting eyes on the, on the artwork or on the performances. And so you've kind of evolved this into a community space. Yeah, 100%. It's, we, we believe in empowering our community 100% by providing, we do Lit Young's Towns, their, their poetry readings once a month, we have paired up with J.D. Eicher, his nonprofit, once a year, we've done smarts, we've done pretty much every nonprofit in the area has worked with us. Yeah, and so Christmas time, there's lots of Christmas parties here, there are weddings here, there are, like you say, bar mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. um, there are all kinds of events here. Is you, and that's the key thing, is where does, why does artwork and a bar work? It, it, because someone's coming, sitting down, and your most intimate time is you're drinking or eating and looking at pieces. Having events such as the weddings or having the thing, there is the benefit so that we get the money from that when maybe a show is a little bit more off the wall and sell. But having those events, people are actually coming in looking at the stuff. It's nice to get that money from, from those different events, but it helps keep everything going. Now, pre-COVID, um, tell us how this, how your month, how you kick off your month and what you do. So first Friday of every month, uh, for the past five years, we've done an opening, a new show, um, and everything in the walls gets changed down into um, a, a new theme or a new artist or a new group of artists. Um, and so we've always reserved that for, for that time. We run it out to private events, uh, concerts, poetry reading, yoga. Uh, when you say art, uh, that's a pretty big umbrella. There's a lot of things that that can cover. And so we've kind of kept our mind open as, as far as anything artistic we want to do. Um, and it doesn't necessarily even have to make us a ton of money for us to do it. Um, we want to be that space that's devoted for it. So it's not a traditional business model. It's not something that I would recommend everyone to, to adopt. Uh, we can take this show and put it in New York and probably make tons of money if we wanted to, but that's kind of not our goal. I mean, we're not great business people in that aspect. <laughs> But that's not that's not our, our primary goal. Our primary goal is to, to bring an audience to the area for people to see see the work, promote the artist, and for the artist to have a place to show his um, his or her own um, okay. town. So I think one of the things I'd like to bring out, at least at this point, is you know you mentioned Steve's uh, uh, graduate degree, and you talk you know uh, one of the things I'd like you to talk about is. You're both involved in education to a certain extent. Why? Dan, you first. So. And tell us what you do. So. Because you do a lot. I do a lot. Um, so I have my undergrad from YSU. My master's is one credit short from YSU. Hell, it freeze over before I pay that one credit hour. <laughs> um, it's, so then I teach for SMARTS. SMARTS is a community uh, arts organization that provides art classes to the underserved in Youngstown. So I teach two times a week for them. Uh, I teach after school, I teach adult classes. I do walking tours. If you come to the gallery, I can talk for hours. Education for the arts is a passion because it's an escape. It allows for our youth, especially in Youngstown, they have rough lives, our kids have rough lives and they need to be able to perform music, to be able to draw, to have an escape. Because when, they, when I'm with a, a student, they are away from the abuse or something hard that's going on at home. So being able, and that's the same thing as having a gallery in the downtown, we provide a space that is hopefully an escape. So I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, the 
power of fulfillment and doing it, you know, doing for others because you, it actually fulfills you yeah. and it's giving. And when you talk about escape, I think that's very key as an entrepreneur starting a new business of how do you provide that escape? So what you do is always meaningful. You would agree with that? I would 100% is 100% agree with that because having something that your passion and I think passion about the foundation, the beginning levels of that, to be able to make sure that it stays not only sort of pure, but simple enough that it has access to everyone is a good way to do a business. So how rewarding is it? I mean, it's stress. I mean, it's stressful. It's, it's, it's every day. It's you well, know, sure because you got to pay the bills. How to pay the bills? It's stressful because you don't know the classes you want to get to read at. You don't know how, don't know how the community will perceive an art show. You know, it's it, you do get the you know the letters that say you know this year you didn't have. A huge amount of women showed in a show, and you go actually 84% of people that run these shows this year were women, and then you can still write the letter as well. They weren't. Should have been 85%. Should have been 85%. <laughs> or why didn't you have LGBTQ, where I, most of our artists are one of those letters, or it's you don't know. And we try, and that's and that's a stress. That's a stress. Yeah. You can't be all things. You can't be all things. But we try to represent as much as we can. Steve, how how does this work with you as far as fulfillment and your education and being able to deploy that? Some of the other stuff you do. Well, you're. How do you manage all of that? You're you're given a certain um, you're given a certain Swiss Army knife when you get a degree, typically. Um, and it gives you, well, operating a business gives you the ability to try to use all those tools within that Swiss Army knife. Um, and that's, that's kind of part of the fun of running a business and that it can be stressful. Um, but how do I manipulate this tool, uh, this lever in order to um, change how this business operates or even flip the model? How do we, how do we COVID comes in, what, what do we do differently that other people um, are, are not doing and how, how do we how do we structure things? I mean, I think I first we've gone through probably three or four business models, but refining that as it goes on, what works, what doesn't. Do we want to be the cheapest round place in the entire area? No, that doesn't really work. Um, so we've got to we've refined that over time. That's been that's been fun really to do. Um, it's sometimes stressful, but still. So that's a good lead into my next so, question about COVID. Mm -hmm. So these are unique mm -hmm. times. This has been a very odd circumstance. Um, I think everybody on the phone call today would say, we hope it never happens again. But I think the real reality is who knows what caused this and who knows if this is warfare from some other entity other than Steve us. Started. <laughs> like so, so I mean, how do you how do you put a business plan around that type of interruption and what has it done to you personally and business wise? So the first Friday in March, we had a full opening. There was a hundred artists on the walls, 169 people, well, hundred artists showing 169 pieces. Full opening the next day, we closed our doors. We were done. We got a text message from everyone that we had to be done. Yeah, because you had to close completely. We had to right? close completely. And come February, come end of March, we have started adapting to go all digital. And if you look at the piece that's behind me, it's a five foot by five foot painting. Standing in front of a five foot by five foot painting is powerful. But then when you take a picture of it and you go to sell it on Instagram or Facebook or social media or a website, it becomes a three inch by three inch piece that doesn't really look that great. And doesn't have the same meaning. It doesn't have the same meaning. So we had that 169 pieces up on the walls. 